I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about why does the avoidant get cold? It's winter time. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how when we think of people that we're close to and we're bonding with, we think of them in terms of like warm. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel warm, but when they're not interested, or they're giving you mixed messages, a lot of times they could be cold. Frigid, yeah. So we're gonna talk about this today. Somebody asked to do a e uh, video on this. They said, hi Craig, I wanted to thank you again for our awesome call recently. I felt so much better after hearing your feedback and just talking about my breakup with you. I will definitely wanna talk with you again soon as I know my situation is complicated. And if you do wanna get a coaching with us, it's easy to do on the website. You can get a Skype coaching with myself or Victoria, and I also do email coaching. After talking with you and doing the creative healing course, I'm starting to realize how avoidance sabotage relationships. I'm still having a hard time understanding how they can do it when a relationship is going well. And that is the confusing part because you think, why? Mm-hmm. It happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, I don't understand it. If we get along so great and we don't have any issues, why are they sabotaging it? Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Okay, there's some deep-rooted stuff going on there. And us humans have the tendency to try to follow logic in emotional situations sometimes. Yes. And it... It can be a good thing sometimes, but in situations like this, it can really keep you disconnected from your ex's thought process or your partner's thought process. Yeah. So think about it. You know, when you think about a relationship and connection, it feels warm and amazing and exciting. But for many, many, many people in this world, intimacy is difficult. Vulnerability is scary. Giving someone space and freedom is scary. And balancing those things is very scary and it's not easy to do. Unless you really grew up in a secure home with really great, loving, emotionally attentive and available parents, you're gonna have insecurities. Right, and what's so interesting is that a lot of kids grow up with parents who have the mentality of tough love. If we toughen them up, them up now, they're gonna know how to respond in the future when they're hurt. But actually what happens is you're creating less resilient children mm -hmm. because now you're, you're letting them know, okay, this is what happens when somebody says that they love you, they mistreat you. Mm -hmm. Or these are things that you can tolerate. Or these are things that you know somebody can say they love you and be incredibly unsafe for you. So kids, they pick up the own, their own messages and they understand things in their own way. And normally it's not the way that the parents will try to be sending that message. Yeah. That is such a huge point that a lot of parents think being tough with their small children in particular is going to make them more resilient and it really does the exact opposite. If you have kids or you're going to have kids, there is nothing that you can do that would be better for their mental health than to be emotionally available, loving and supportive and helping them learn how to regulate their emotions. When parents, you know, yell at their kids and say, toughen up, I'll give you something to cry about, the, the child doesn't learn how to regulate their emotions. And then they're going to be in for a lifetime of trauma and dealing with it. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely critical that you are loving, attentive. Don't let babies cry it out. Never let your baby cry it out. Pick them up and soothe them and they will start to learn to do that themselves and they'll be a lot less likely to struggle with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. right and you're probably wondering why we're talking so much about children and thinking how this is relevant to your breakup and how this is relevant to adult relationships 
a lot of avoidance adult avoidance who are acting cold who are acting frigid and distant they grew up in these types of environments mm -hmm. and when they are triggered in their mind they go back to these childlike thoughts these protective thoughts yeah like it was a coping skill mm -hmm. they did they learned they did these things to cope in a difficult environment but then as an adult they don't learn the healthy way to deal with it right and a lot of these things are done unconsciously when when avoidance back off and get cold and they're maybe scared about something or something's bothering them it's in their unconscious and they don't know how to do anything different so for you it could be very difficult when somebody is coming out hot and strong and intense and they're telling you they love you they want to marry you they want to have kids with you mm -hmm. and then they disappear and back away for three weeks and you're like what the heck just happened mm -hmm. And you can feel that pullback, right? Sometimes you can't explain it or put it into words, yeah. but you can feel it. Mm -hmm. You know when somebody's acting different and they're texting less and they're leaving you on red. And so you notice that they're no longer as present with you in the interactions. And maybe even when you're spending time with them, they're not as attentive as they were, they're more distracted, they're looking at their phone, mm -hmm. they're looking at other people, mm -hmm. and it can be a lot. And then it just triggers you, and it becomes a downward spiral. Right, and what we really want you to gain from this is when somebody is cold, underneath the layers of the onion, they are afraid. And when I think of this concept, I think about the high schooler that's trying to be the cool kid. Mm -hmm. He's maybe a little bit more quiet, a little bit more mysterious. And really he's suffering from social anxiety because he doesn't know what to say to other people. And he's thinking that everyone's judging him and he's, he's really scared on the inside. Mm -hmm. That is kind of like what an avoidant can be. They have this outward image of being cold, keeping you at a distance, but they are human beings and they do want human connection. Now, when you have these two things in one person, wanting connection, but having this coping me mechanism where you push people away, that can cause people to self-sabotage. And this is very confusing because when a relationship is good, there are all of those thoughts of this is too good. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, I was told that, you know, this also came along with pain or, you know, I, in these moments where I felt like our connection was close as a kid with my caregiver, they would use my vulnerabilities against me later and hurt me. That's right. And so instead of feeling that warmth, they feel an alarm system go off in their body. And that's important to remember because you think, oh, they're cold, they don't even care. You know, they're unaffected by this. Their psyche is affected by it one way or another. They just present it very differently. That's right. Another analogy that I can use to help describe this phenomena is it's kind of like when you get rear-ended in a car. For a while after when you're driving down the road, I bet you, you are gonna be looking at that rear view mirror every time you come to a stoplight or a stop sign mm -hmm. because you've had that bad experience. Yeah. Now imagine that happening on a different scale, on an emotional scale when you're younger. Avoidance have a hard time trusting people. They are constantly looking at their rear view mirror in relationships. Does this person have ulterior motives? Is this person gonna hurt me? Mm -hmm. you know, so they, they close off and they're on alert differently from the anxious person, but in a more protective way. That is why they distance people. And the other thing is, is that the reality is most relationships do fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, what percentage of relationships actually last? 3%? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless you wind up marrying someone and staying with them until you die, the relationship ends, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a really normal thing to think the relationship is going to fail. It probably will. Mm -hmm. And if you don't work through your own issues and have the skills to make a relationship work, obviously it's going to make it more likely that it does. Exactly. And I also want to remind you that a lot of what we're talking about is conscious, but also unconscious. Yes. So what we mean by this is they may not be having these thoughts directly. They might not even have the words to be able to tell you, I am scared right now. I'm struggling with trusting you, even if you have been so good to me. Mm -hmm. But this is more of a feeling that's been integrated into their body because of the trauma. Yep. All right. So the next big point on why avoidance get cold 
is hypersensitivity to rejection, okay? Rejection hurts, okay? It's very painful in our body. It causes physical pain, okay? So if you've been rejected, and think about it, if your parents are neglectful, that's a form of rejection. If your parents, you know, you're going to your parents as a small child and trying to get their attention and they're cold and dismissive to you, that's rejection. And so now it's been so traumatic for them in the past that the idea of that coming up again is very painful and they're scared of it. Just like being at the stoplight, mm -hmm. right? You're afraid of it's going to happen. So if they sense any kind of rejection, they're going to back away and they're going to be less likely to be pursuing you and the connection anymore. So the other thing to that, that makes it even difficult because you may be thinking, well, I was a great partner. Why would they do this to me? I never did anything to make them think I, I would reject them. It doesn't matter if it's real or if it's perceived in their own mind. It's just as powerful. So you may not do anything to make that person feel rejected, but the, they could be going over the past rejections and replaying those other things in their mind and connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, wait, we're having a little argument. I had a little argument with so-and-so and it led to a breakup eventually. Mm -hmm. We're gonna break up. So just understand that they're hypersensitive to things and that fear of rejection makes them back away and get cold. On the topic of rejection, sometimes they can be proactive in rejecting you in order to protect themselves. And so on that note of you being a good partner, it being a good relationship where you feel connected, where you feel like you've been treating them well, they do have the seed of doubt in their mind that what you're telling them is real, what you're feeling is real. Mm -hmm. So in order to protect themselves from that feeling of impending doom or that mm -hmm. you know impending pain that's going to happen they say well i'm going to end this relationship now so margaret used to say quitting before you get fired yeah <laughs> and so you might have no intention of ending the relationship and wanting it to continue but they might have that sense of i know that this is kind of come to an end i know that this you know I, I can feel negative things coming up the closer i get i need to end this now before people get more hurt especially me <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that feeling of rejection is is really strong. And I like what you said about neglect being rejection from parents to a child. Yeah. You know, I think that's how a child would look at it as my parents don't love me, my parents aren't caring for me. Am I not important to them? Yeah. So reminding you that all of this comes from a place of pain doesn't make their behavior acceptable, but just so that you understand more of of what they're experiencing. Mm-hmm. Like I had mentioned before, a lot of this is unconscious and they may not have the verbiage, they may not have the language. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you're having this feeling, our brains can kind of spiral until we find something that's good enough, something that's reasonable to explain what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. In this case, we hear a lot, it can be something like, well, we want different things, so this is one going to work yeah even though you might have all similar interests and everything aligned <laughs> yes. and you know might be the perfect horoscope compatibility and everything everything is perfect <laughs> and they'll find something yeah because yep. it's really they're just looking for that excuse or it could be something very minuscule that they dump all of their anger into because they've been taught that you know you can't show anger in in other circumstances or get too emotional about other situations yep. so sometimes they'll choose something really small like well you didn't clean the dishes so I I just don't think that this is going to work. It really hurt me when that happened. And you're thinking, oh my God, this anger is out of proportion. You know, I yeah. just didn't clean the dishes once when really it was, well, I felt overwhelmed when, you know, you wanted to talk about the relationship or I felt, you know, like you were uh, wanting a lot from me when you wanted me to go on this trip with you. So it could be other things that are harder for them to explain or would cause them to go into a more emotional conversation. So they say, well, I'm going to, in their mind, I don't know if they actively think this way or consciously think this way, but in their mind, they pick something else to be the reason. And they, yeah, and they push you away. Mm -hmm. And you'll understand a lot of this if you're doing the workbooks, especially the creative healing course. We get in a lot of these things mm -hmm. in depth and detail because when you understand this stuff, it's so much easier to navigate relationships and it's going to help you with anybody that you date.
honestly, because everybody has attachment issues mm -hmm. and a lot of similar issues come up over and over again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Another thing that you may see exes do or avoidance do when they're cold is the mental mind games. Mm. Right? I love games. <laughs> like, you know, Monopoly. Yeah. You don't want to play these games. <laughs> <laughs> these games are brutal, right? They test you. Mm. A lot of times they are insecure about things. So they need to, to get some validation and reassurance. But they don't know how to express that. They can't say, I feel like you've been a little bit distant lately. Or I've been worried we've been arguing so much. And so I'm a little worried that you might want to leave me. No, they'll ask you something really unusual or confusing and hypothetical questions. A lot of insecure <laughs> people ask you hypothetical questions. Would you, my favorite is, I always see like this as a meme. Mm -hmm. Would you still love me if I was a worm? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, what? And they're like, oh, you said what? So you wouldn't love me if I was I a worm? I knew it this whole time. <laughs> I knew I couldn't trust you. I know it. <laughs> But, you know, that's what insecure people do mm -hmm. to get some validation and reassurance. It's normal to want to get reassurance, right? And it's, it's normal to want to know that the person that you're trusting and close with cares the same amount. Mm -hmm. But when somebody has their insecurities and they're particularly fearful, they're going to really overcompensate and it's going to come on overwhelming in the overwhelming amounts. And so... They'll do all kinds of things. Uh, they may put up barriers to you to keep you from getting close. And then they're going to unconsciously say, well, if they love me, they'll try and get around this. Mm. They'll, they'll try and get around these barriers. Mm -hmm. And then even if you make an effort and they still don't warm up, and it's like, okay, I can't keep doing this. Then they're like, oh, so you don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a double bind when somebody puts you in these types of situations because you can't win either way. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really frustrating is the avoidant does want connection, but they don't even know how to ask for it. Yep. I, I really think that's the, the sad part, mm -hmm. but also the hopeful part that these things can be learned. You know, sure, you didn't learn them as a kid. Sure, you didn't have those role models in your life, but... No, you're here watching this video now. There's something in you or in the avoidance who do start to work on their attachment issues mm -hmm. that pushes them to that next level of health. And so these things can be learned later on in life. They can become second nature and change is possible. Absolutely. You have to work at it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this stuff isn't taught in the schools, but that's why I've made it my mission to talk about this ever since I launched the channel, even way back in the first videos that I made mm -hmm. many, many years ago. Because understanding mental health is absolutely critical to understanding relationships and how to make them work. And when you break it down into attachment styles, it gets easier to understand and to digest. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a much better, clearer picture of how to navigate the person that you're dating and what their needs are. Yeah. So as you go through this video, if you have been broken up with self reflect, go back and look at your situation. You know, were there traits in your ex that they that you noticed that they were a bit more avoidant? Did you see any of the things that we've talked about today in them? We really want you to be listening. We really want you to go back and reflect mm -hmm. and, you know, think about things for yourself. So we're hoping that this video gave you a little bit more perspective because yep. I know if you're a more anxious person in a relationship, the tendency is to blame yourself. You see them cold. You think you've offended them. You think you've... You it's know. your fault. Yeah. So it's... take everything into context and into consideration. Absolutely. And that's exactly what I've done with both the knowledge and the creative healing course. I mean, the knowledge is covers one through 10 covers like 94 videos mm -hmm. and it's close to 600 pages. And then the creative healing course is even bigger than that. So there's lots of great info that we have if you're really passionate about understanding this stuff on a deeper level. And of course, we're here to help you along the way too. If you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you need. Just click on her name to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.